I can't see anything. Look, it looks nice. Look at you. Oh, I'm stepping on everything. It's getting so dirty, but that's okay. You're beautiful. You look <laughs> Thank you. Look at you. This is what you're expecting the dress no. to look like? No. It wasn't what you're you expecting. I thought you might have gone sleeves. You look amazing. I have armbands. I meant like full. Oh, no. I have armbands. You look amazing. You do too. Beautiful. Thank you. I'm excited. Yeah. I can't. Oh, I have okay. to just go like this. <laughs> <laughs> can't you look fix amazing. it. look amazing. look good too. I believe that if you have one true friend in life, you are lucky. Brock and Libby, you are most fortunate to have found the friend across from you to go through life with. I encourage you to remember that love is a choice. The person across from you has chosen to spend their lives with you. Take comfort in that fact. They have chosen to tie their future to yours, to support you through what is ahead, to be there when you falter or stumble, to share in your successes, and face the world together. So it's 2021 and I've heard that all successful love stories begin with a swipe right and a cheesy pickup line. And in case anybody was wondering, the cheesy pickup line that brought us all here today, 10 hours away from home was, haven't we matched before? And Brock's groundbreaking response was something along the lines of, no. <laughs> <laughs> and while I'm not sure if we had actually matched before, if it was just wishful thinking that we were going to end up here today, here we are. The other thing I've heard about a successful marriage is it is falling in love with the same person over and over again. And while I'm not sure of the exact moment I fell for you, Brock, I can tell you a couple of times where you've continued to make me fall for you. Number one, the time I wore a red shirt on Valentine's Day and you asked, isn't that the shirt you wore on our first date? <laughs> and in that moment, I knew you cared about me, even about all the small stuff. Number two, the time you let Celeste paint your nails when no one else would. <laughs> in that moment, I knew you'd be a great person to start a family with. Number three, all the times you went out of your way to go pick up Rudy during house showings and eventually just let him move into your house even though I wasn't living there yet. In that moment, I knew you would move mountains to make me happy. And we'd always have a cat. <laughs> Number four, I knew you would always take care of me in the moment we were on our way home from Kansas City in a terrible snowstorm and you not only calmed my nerves, which you somehow miraculously always do, but also the nerves of my parents. And also on the way to Colorado when we got a flat tire. <laughs> And number five, of course, every time you watch The Batch with me and cook me food, reminding me that I'm the luckiest girl in the world. Every girl dreams of a partner that is as loving, generous, humble, calm, and encouraging as you are, Brock. Loving you is a reflex now. I love you with my whole heart, with a passion that cannot be expressed in words, but instead with kisses, glances, love taps, and an occasional back scratch. <laughs> I cannot wait for all the years and adventures yet to come. You're one of the good ones, and I'm so lucky to call you mine. I love you. Lib. <coughs> I've struggled to figure out what to say to you in this short time. Not that I have nothing to say, but I've struggled to define the love I have for you. It's not so simple as making a list of reasons why. I could stand here and tell you that you're kind, caring, you're beautiful and smart, but those are just ways to describe you. The love I have for you trumps any other simple reason, and yet I know the love I have for you is strong and true. My family and friends have been saying for a while now that I'm a better person having met you. I think they have used the word that I'm more tolerable. <laughs> and while all that is true, it's more the fact that you've just made me happy. I love you because you have made me happy. Libby, I vow to you, I will always try to cheer you up when you are down, when I tick you off, and I will. I will always make it up to you. I vow to love you always, unconditionally, and endlessly. And now Brock, do you take Elizabeth to be your wife? Do you promise to love, 
honor, cherish, and protect her, forsaking all others, and holding only unto her for forevermore? I do. Now, Elizabeth, do you take Brock to be your husband? Do you promise to love, honor, cherish, and protect him, forsaking all others, holding only unto him for forevermore? I do. And now, by the power vested in me by the Universal Life Church, it is my honor and delight to declare you married. You may seal the declaration with a kiss. So sweaty. No, I'm sorry. I tried. I tried. It is my honor, and I am so pleased to introduce for the first time Mr. and Mrs. Pope. I swear we belong, I'm still hanging on, but something brings me back to you, 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 back to you. I've stayed in 